The next presentation is Team Peace of Mind with the title Promoting Mental Health of Seafarers on Board. Uh, please welcome Team Peace of Mind. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Team Peace, Peace of Mind. Mind. It is our utmost honor to take part in this conference with experts in the field of maritime affairs. We have worked together to amend current conventions and to implement measures to ensure mental health care for seafarers and for their general peace of mind. We hope our presentation contributes to the development of maritime society and the well-being of seafarers. Please enjoy our presentation. Thank you! Good morning, honorable judges, distinguished guests and delegates, and ladies and gentlemen. This is Team Peace of Mind here to introduce some proposals to deal with the issue of promoting the mental health of seafarers on board. We'll first explain about the current situation of mental health of seafarers and move on to existing solutions and currently, finally, our proposals towards it. First, mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. According to the WHO, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. An important implication from this definition is that mental health is as equally important as physical health when it comes to overall well-being, and they have correlations. For example, according to the Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention, depression increases diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. Therefore, the promotion, restoration of mental health of seafarers and individuals is a vital concern for communities and societies. The life of a seafarer means living and working under more challenging conditions than most people. They have a continuous routine, seven days a week, working and living on board the vessel, most working long hours and have voyage-based contracts that last up to 12 months at a time. They are often far from home and have limited contact with their family and friends due to lack of internet, time zone differences, and long working hours. And this can contribute to feelings of isolation and loneliness. Also, seafarers working in the international cargo shipping sector work with people from different parts of the world in which they can face culture differences and lifestyle issues. Therefore, all of these elements can directly lead to negative impact on seafarers' mental health and make seafarers more susceptible to mental illness than people on shore. The pandemic made the situation worse. As of July 2021, according to the IMO, it is estimated that 250,000 seafarers are currently stranded on ships beyond their original contract, and they are unable to repatriate due to COVID-19 related restrictions. Not being able to leave ships, seafarers are losing more contact with their family and friends. According to the Seafarers Happiness Index by the Mission to Seafarers, we can see that the overall happiness level has been fluctuating during the recent years. Even though there has been an increase in the happiness level between 2020 quarter two to 2021 quarter one, it still remains under 6.6 .6 out of 10, which according to the Mission to Seafarers is a struggling zone. And even before COVID-19, the happiness level was never higher than 7 out of 10. This low level of satisfaction and happiness can lead to reduction of the worker's ability to undertake his duties efficiently and safely on board. For example, it can lead to increase in suicide rates, work-related injuries, and accidents, in which one seafarer's condition can impact the condition of the whole ship. Therefore, mental health promotion on board will not only promote current SDG, but also ensure the peace of mind of seafarers. So what has been done? To tackle the mental health of seafarers, the IMO has a Seafarer Crisis Action Team, Scott, which helps resolve individual cases, working with other organizations such as the ILO, ITF, and the ICS. Also, shipping companies of some nations have their own psychological treatment system for their seafarers. Even though these attempts surely have solved a lot of cases, we believe that there needs to be a built-in system for prevention and easy treatment for mental health of seafarers. 
And we believe this will also accomplish the third and eighth sustainable development goal, which is to promote good health and well-being and to provide health services and social security protection for seafarers. Now this delegate would like to hand over the mic to our second delegate. Thank you. This is the second delegate, and from now on, we would like to present some problems of the existing measures. The first problem is the absence of the direct treatments upon mental illness on board. Although telemedical maritime assistance service and radio medical assistance service are constantly being used for diagnosis and prescriptions of patients or cargoes, some documents were showing us that those services are not facilitated in the mental health area. According to adoption of amendments to the International Aeronautical and Maritime Search and Rescue, Appendix R, TMAS Medical Exchange Form classifies patient status in three conditions, accident, illness, and poisoning. There are no exact provision for mental health problems, since mental health problem contains not only just a severe mental illness, but also more broad concepts. Furthermore, when we reviewed the list of contents of the emergency medical kit and bag by IMO 2002, the essential medical kit bags were in lack of the medicine related to the mental health, which may make TMA service useless. The second weakness we found was the lack of mental care related content on the United Nations regulations. Overviewing the whole articles of the STCW, there were articles dealing with the working environment of the seafarers, but there were no articles dealing with the mental health of the seafarers. Also, MLC only deals with mental health issues under the implementation of the ILO code. Although there is IMO published guidance on fatigue mitigation and management, it only handles the problem upon fatigue not the over condition of mental health. One more point that we could focus on was that there are no United Nations established or authorized guidelines for the education of seafarers about their mental health. Although many NGOs and countries are developing an education system to raise the awareness about the mental health upon the seafarers, there are no particular guidelines for those educations declared by the United Nations. Last but not least, the problem we analyzed was the deficiency of seafarers' mental illness prevention and the lack of caring individual crew member conditions. As mentioned previously, IMO and other related organizations are focusing on helping seafarers only in need, and the mission to seafarers and some countries are conducting a survey that collects our mental health well-being data for seafarers to conduct some treatments upon them. However, a mental health survey published by the United Nations does not exist. Also, there are no particular mental health monitoring system to focus on the individual to discover and handle who is in need beforehand. So currently, treatment is only happening when the one asks for help, and some seafarers does not even know that they're going through a severe mental disorders before they go to a land. So now, this delegate would like to turn over the floor to the third delegate. Thank you. From now on, we will move on to our specific solution for the issue. First, we have tackled the lack of direct treatment or system for mental health issues. We therefore propose IMO's list of contents of the emergency medical kit bag and medical consideration for its use on railroad passenger ships not normally carrying a medical doctor. We would include a rational amount of supply of mental health medication under the two medicines group. We believe that this measure would have an additional effect of facilitating the provision of TMAS for mental health medication prescription 
or treatment accordingly to the Article 11 of the aforementioned list. Additionally to this, Peace of Mind requests to amend SDCW Conventions Table A-VI-4-2 specifications of minimum standard of competence in medical care is column two under the column one competence, which is provide medical care to the sick and injured while they remain on board to contain the contents of mental health and well-being. Also, understanding that the IMO model course is built on the STCW convention, Peace of Mind also deplores to amend IMO model course 1.15 it would add additional education about the newly added mental health drugs to inform the mental instructor, medical instructor in charge on board. Moving on, our second suggestion is to amend STCW 2010 section A-VI-1 by adding 1.8, expect possible mental issues and causes while on board under the safety familiarization training one. Through such inclusion, our team believes that we would promote fundamental structure to ensure sufficient training on such mental health issues and medications. Also, Peace of Mind highly recommends the IMO to encourage shifts to install methods such as, but not limited to, videos, posters, or brochures to deliver information on mental health issues or related services that seafarers may receive on board in places where all ship crews are accessible to. Overall, we believe that this would be implemented to raise awareness and change the negative perception that seafarers usually had on mental instability. Finally, Peace of Mind suggests the IMO to create a checkup program on mental health of seafarers with the cooperation of TMAS. Through this checkup, we would encourage treatment to see first through adhering to the following steps. First, we would detect the seafarers in danger level through conducting the regular checkup system. Second, we will then notify the, to the industry the seafarers who are in the struggling zone, which would then lead to the third step which is providing TMAS or related services for the seafarers in order to enhance their mental state. Finally, as this is a regular checkup, our last step would be conducting the checkup again and seeing if the checkup, seeing if the treatment has made a significant change on the mental state of seafarers. Now we will move on to our conclusion. As explained, through our solution has a three-point solution. Through implementing these solutions on the issue of seafarer mental health on board, Peace of Mind expects the following positive results. First, it would combat the taboo on opening about mental health issues on board. Through bringing the mental health problem forward to be actively addressed in various sectors, Reluctance on admitting their state and receiving according treatment would be removed. Second, professional help for treating mental health problems would be readily accessible on board, making it possible for seafarers to get necessary help when needed. Finally, effectively combating mental health issues would genuinely lead to a decrease in man-made accidents during navigation due to mental health issues that affect performance negatively. And we would once again like to notify that our solution would touch upon SDG 3, which is good health and well-being, and also SDG 8, decent work and economic growth, as it provides measures for building mental well-being of seafarers in their own working environment. We also would like to notify that our solution has put its focus and its interest on achieving SD6, which is ensuring regulatory effectiveness. 
Since we do believe that dealing with the mental instability and mental issues of seafarers will lead to an increase in their general efficiency of work done on board. We thank you for your attention and we hope that our proposal contributes to IMO and its goals and also to the general peace of mind of seafarers. Thank you. Thank you, Team Peace of Mind. So Q&A session started. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Contagion Busters. Thank you, delegates, for your presentation. I really, really like your subject. Uh, I heard in your presentation that you add the medical kit in ship, but usually second or third officer is responsible for a hospital in ship. They have to check the every expiry date of, of those medicines. So it is work. So mm, the workload will be higher if you put the medical kit. So I think, I don't think that uh, it will reduce the, stre uh, it reduce the mental health of uh, officer. Thank you. Uh, first, we would like to thank you for your thoughtful question. And regarding the questions that you have posed, since the medical kit bag is already an IMO resolution that is being initiated to railroad passenger ships not normally carrying a medical doctor, we believe that there would be no, not much additional workloads that would be placed on officers that you mentioned before. Since the thing we are doing, the proposal that we are proposing, is just to add additional mental health drugs to the usual loads of drugs that are already being provided on ships. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Yep, thank you. Uh, from Judge. Presentation. Uh, and thank you very much for your crew's mental health. You, uh, you raised the uh, crew's mental health issue. And you suggested the regular check of crew's mental status. So uh, I was long time seaman and a, I was the captain of the merchant vessel. But the regular check of crew's mental status is very sensitive and very difficult to uh, the tool of the checking items. So what is your suggestion for the uh, detail checkup tools. First of all, we would like to deliver our sincere gratitude for your um, for raising a thoughtful concern about this regular checkup tools. We are uh, looking forward to use a regular checkup tool as a um, mobile checkup tools if it is under e-navigation. And if it is not under e-navigation system, we would like to deliver it as a paperwork to deliver it as when they arrive at a land. So this is how we are conducting a regular checkup. And we are looking forward that e-navigation system will be further more implemented through whole strips. So that is the reason why we are looking forward to use a TMA AES service as also as a regular checkup tools. Uh, further adding on, as she mentioned, although it is not currently 100% ensured that all ships are under e-navigation, we are seeing that technology is still developing, and therefore we see the possibility that the implementation of online checkup will also be uh, increase the possibility of online checkups too. Yeah, I think we should be very careful to to check the crew's mental status, and because it is very sensitive, and uh, according to the items. Uh, to check up the crew's mental status, it, I think it may, be, may hurt reversely to crew's mental health. Thank you. Thank you, Judge, for your advice. Uh, another question? T 
Kim Amo Nushan. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Well, we have a question regarding the medical instructor as well as who will be, um, I guess, organizing and taking control of the kit bag. Uh, in terms of the people on the boat, so seafarers, how will they be specifically educated in terms of how to access these materials? Thank you. Uh, for once, thank you for your thoughtful question. And regarding the education of medical instructors in charge on board, we have already integrated the IMO model course 1.15 and its modifications. And we also have amended the STCW convention to integrate the related instructions to, the, to deliver those contents to the medical instructor on board. Additionally, the medical kit bag regulations that we mentioned before already has related instructions on how to educate and guide and deal with the medical instructor that deals with the medical kit and takes care of it. So this delegate believes that the questions that you raised would be solved through those kind of processes. Thank you. Uh, Tim, see, uh, sorry, yeah, from George? Congratulations to your excellent presentation. Uh, but I have uh, one small concern about your idea. Uh, you suggested uh, in the emergency medical kit bag uh, to include mental health medication. Uh, but I wonder if you have uh, checked about the possibility uh, to bring his or her own mental medication uh, properly prescribed by the proper doctor uh, before uh, on board. And it, I think the medical medication, uh, health, mental health, medi health medical medication is a long term treatment, not just short term, like a emergency aid kit. So I think if there is a simple way to solve this problem, uh, uh, also because also, uh, nowadays the how can I say, navigation period that, that, that is not that long. So it's a simple way is to bring one month worth or two months worth uh, health, uh, mental health medication when he or her, she uh, gets on board. Did you check about this possibility? Um, first of all, thank you for your thoughtful question. And we'll, to answer your question, there we are looking for two split uh, short-term and long-term solution to provide their mental uh, mental mental stability of seafarers. And first is to provide prescription of medicines by using TMAS to severe issues such as extreme fatigue or insomnia. However, to solve long-term solutions of mental disorders, we aim to use telepsychiatry, which is under TMAS, to provide a constant, constant psychological help to the seafarers on board. And to add on to the previous advice from the judge, we considered that those um, regular checkups um, questions should be made under the IMO and WHO's cooperations to make it more uh, efficient for seafarers to answer. And we are planning to uh, conduct this regular survey for the only ones who agreed to providing their personal information so that they could be aware of their personal information. And also that is a reason why we are uh, empathizing about raising awareness about mental illness upon the seafarers to lead them to uh, a regular checkups. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, from C. Buffalo. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, your presentation. Um, I wonder uh, whether providing mental health medication um, to uh, mentally ill seafarers would be um, a fundamental approach to solve the problem, as um, I don't see how it can be uh, more advantageous uh, when compared to the convention conventional um, way to uh, provide the seafarer 
um, medication on land uh, when they when the ship pulls at ports or um, when the seafarers repatriate uh, back to their countries, um, especially because uh, ship owners must uh, take p protection and indemnity insurance, which covers crew injury uh, insurance. So I wonder how this can be more advantageous um, when compared to the conventional way. Thank you. Uh, thank you, delegate, for your thoughtful question. And we would like to answer that Mental health medications are not a one-time one thing. It needs uh, continuous, it needs to be continuously done, and it needs to be continuously prescribed until their mental state has been better. But however, the medication that is prescribed during the seafarers are on land might have limitations because the amount of med mental prescription, mental health prescriptions that is given on land, the amount is limited. And also we believe that mental health medication, mental health issues could be more prone to happen on board due to the environments that happen on board. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, uh, when you ask questions, please be short and concise. And I would appreciate if you don't include I mean, your personal opinions. It, it should be a question rather than uh, opinion, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. A uh, piece of mind, uh, please return to your seat. Thank you.